Hey, what is up, Smooth Skins? So nuts here. In this video, we're going to be exploring the creepy Wildwood Cemetery. Now, we're going to be checking out some of the mausoleums. We're also going to be checking out some of the cool grave sites. And we're also going to be checking out some of the interesting areas located right here in the cemetery. Now, if you haven't been here before and you plan on coming, make sure you come packing some heat. Because right in the center, near that tree, there's about 10 or 11 feral ghouls, one of which is a glowing one, and they will fuck your shit up. Your best bet is to come in from the north, which is, which is where I'm at right now, as you can see. Wildwood, there's me. Because there's a tree that has fallen on top of one of these mausoleums, and if you go to the tip of it, you're safe. The feral ghouls cannot fuck with you. You can shoot them from a distance, pick them off one by one, Boom, stack up that XP, come back down, and safely explore this decrepit dead body landfill, as I like to call it. Alright, so the first cool thing I want to show you guys is this tree. Now you might be thinking, why do you want to show us a creepy tree? There's nothing special about that. But oh, I beg to differ, sir. There's something very special about this tree, because I think it is a herald easter egg. And if you don't know who Harold is, it was a talking tree that lived in Oasis in Fallout 3. And it was a very sad, lonely, and depressed tree that wanted to die. And it gives you a quest to go underground, destroy its heart, and end its misery and set it free. And that's what most of us did. You could also choose to not destroy its heart and make it live forever and suffer. But why would you want to do that, you cruel animal? But the reason I think this is a Herald reference is because the tree itself is big, bulky, ugly, looks a lot like the Herald tree. It's also surrounded by glowing fungus, which is the same type of glowing fungus that was surrounding the Herald tree. Another reason I think it's a Herald reference is because it's right here, dead in the center of the cemetery. And like I said before, most of us put... Harold out of his misery and I think this is Bethesda paying homage to Harold you know this is like some type of memorial for the tree because Bethesda knows that he was a fan favorite and they couldn't just dig him out of the ground in Oasis and bring him over and drop him off in Boston because that wouldn't make a damn bit of sense so the best thing they could do was just make a tree that um represents Harold and I think that's what this is could be wrong but knowing Bethesda I'm probably right what do you guys think let me know below for show so the next thing we're gonna be checking out is this mausoleum right here now I believe this is a, another Easter egg but this is a reference to Dexter and if you don't know what Dexter is it's an awesome TV show that you can find on Netflix right now. And if you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. Go watch that shit. What are you waiting for? So good. Except season 8. Don't watch season 8 because you'll be uh, very disappointed. But uh, this is more specific to season 7, episode 3. Where Dexter is trying to get evidence on a ball-headed woman killer. So he's stalking this guy who works at a cemetery. And this guy has trophies of the women he killed in a mausoleum. So when Dexter enters said mausoleum, he finds a helmet with horns in between some candles. And it looks pretty much just like this. Now I know that's a skull with two hands behind it, but it does look a lot like horns. Am I right? So that's why I think it's the Dexter reference. It could also be a True Detective Season 1 reference. Could be a reference to a movie that I've never seen before. Or it could just be weird item placement by the Bethesda team. We may never know. Either way, it's still pretty kick-ass. And I like it a lot. Hey, bitch. Who the fuck are you? Get the fuck out of here with your sexy raider ass. Trying to interrupt my video. Uh-uh. Not up in here. Not going to make me lose my train of thought. It happens way too often. Alright, so the next things we're going to check out are the interesting grave sites. So we're going to start up here. There's two. There's this one. 
which has a little teddy bear, a little toy car, and some little flowers. Now, this is a really sad grave site because it lets us know that there's a kid buried here, most likely under 10 years old because of the teddy bear. His parents probably brought these toys because they were probably his favorite. That way, he'll have them with him at all times. R.I.P. little homie. Come up here, we have another sad grave site. As you can see, we got this dead guy with a beer clutched in his hand. Laid on top of a tombstone. He was probably drinking his sorrows away, mourning his wife, her best friend, or father, or mother, or other loved one who was buried here. And he just couldn't live without him, so he came here and just got wasted. Probably passed out on top of the tombstone, and that's when the nukes hit, and it just disintegrated his skin, and he stayed that way. And it's, it's really sad, man. R.I.P. Whoever's under that ground. What you need to do is get off the tombstone, though. It's really disrespectful. Respectful. <laughs> Respectful, bro. Ooh, look at that cool shit. That is an awesome beer bottle, dude. Just floating. Magical. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. I'm trying to remember where all the interesting uh, grave sites are. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, where are they? Oh, here we go. There's a cigar box on top of this one. Which leads me to believe that whoever is buried here was a smoker of some sort. And his favorite type of smoke was Cuban cigars. So his wife or relative brought his box of cigars, set it on top of his grave. That way it'll be with him forever. And the irony is the smoking probably put him here. R.I.P. homie. Next we have this uh, grave site, which could be uh, very depressing if you look at it from my angle. I think... The husband is buried here, and I think the wife is inside the vase. I think the husband was buried, and I think they couldn't afford to bury the wife, so they cremated her, put her in the vase, and then put her vase on top of the grave. That way, the husband and wife are together forever. It's beautiful and sad all at the same time. R.I.P., you cute couple. Alright, the next interesting gravesite is right over here, which has a baseball glove, baseball, and baseball bat, which leads us to believe that this might be either a baseball player who died, or maybe a preteen or a teen at, who really enjoyed baseball, and this is some of their favorite gear that the parents left here. Either way, R.I.P. little Jose Canseco. Now if we come over here, there are two unmarked graves without tombstones. There's this one, and there's this one with the bucket next to it. Now I think there's two raiders buried here. I think there's a raider here and a raider here because we just killed a raider that tried to attack me. So I think this was the raider's sanctuary, and these guys were probably attacked and killed by those feral ghouls. And... That raider that I just killed probably buried him out of respect. Didn't just want to leave him out to rot. They'd rather let him rot in the ground, which is which is commendable. Bitch shouldn't have ran at me with the fucking weapon, though. Then she'd probably still be alive, but whatever. It's all good. All right, where are the other interesting grave sites? Let's see. Oh yeah, there's it. No, this one right here. We got a candle lit, we got jet, and we got another vase. Now this leads me to believe that this was probably a jet attic. Maybe the jet killed them. Maybe it didn't. Maybe they died in a car crash or something else. And I think maybe one of their friends or their significant other was also a jet attic. And that's why there's jet here. Maybe they came took a puff of the jet to try and relax you know and ease the stress of losing their loved one who really knows man either way R.I.P. homie 
And I think this is probably the final interesting tombstone, if I'm not mistaken. And this is a mom who came here to probably mourn the loss of one of her children. As you can see, we got the uh, stroller right here with no baby in it, which leads me to believe she was bringing the stroller here to leave at the grave site. Maybe her baby died prematurely or something like that. So she came here to mourn. And while she was here, that's when the nukes went off and disintegrated her. And now she's lying here, dead, right on top of the uh, same grave site that her son or daughter is in. Or maybe she came here to mourn a family member. Maybe she brought her baby and the feral ghouls treated it like a, like a human chicken wing. I don't know. That's the cool thing about these little uh, little mini stories right here. Like you can make up in your head whatever you think happened. Like what you think happened is probably different from what I think happened. And that's, that's awesome. It's cool that we uh, think differently and have different experiences in these games. And that's what makes me love Bethesda games more than any other game out there. All the Easter eggs, all the references, all the environmental storytelling. Just makes the world feel so alive. This graveyard just feels alive when you come across stuff like that. It doesn't feel like a computer generated environment with a bunch of randomly placed tombstones makes you feel like this world actually existed before the bombs dropped but anyways I think that's pretty much it there's nothing in there and there's nothing in there and you can't go in either of those so I, there's no point in wasting time doing that so I hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, hope it wasn't too long it's probably about 15 minutes though. But either way, what do you guys think about the uh, Herald Easter Egg, the Dexter Easter Egg? Let me know if you agree, disagree, what do you think they are. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm about to go to bed. I think it's like 4 or 5 a.m. I've been up for like 32 hours. If I don't go to bed soon, I'm probably going to die from sleep deprivation. But I just felt like making a video. You know, sometimes you just get in those moods. And I'm sorry if some of the stuff I said didn't make a damn bit of sense in this video because my brain's going like 100 miles per hour. But uh, sayonara, Wastelanders. You guys kick ass. Appreciate all the love.